Jesus. Holy Spirit, that was Jesus. 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 On behalf of our senior God. pastor God. and our first lady, uh, today we welcome you Thank to you, the Jesus. MC Toon Conference. Uh, we welcome you, you, all our Jesus. online family, everybody in-house, you Thank are welcome. You. you know what we say, tell a friend to tell a friend. Share the broadcast. Wisdom Embassy has started, and today is the day one of our MT Toon Conference. Amen. Wisdom Embassy is founded on four pillars. This is the wisdom, the word, the work, and the worship. I want us to begin to pray. This is the foundation, and we're going to pray that anybody who has lifted up themselves uh, as an enemy of this ministry, uh, we command the 10 plagues that we have been praying about uh, to begin to follow them, uh, to Hallelujah. begin to follow their generations. Uh, uh, begin to lift up your voices. Uh, I thought I had some warriors in the room. Uh, I thought I had some assassins with me. Uh, lift up your voices uh, and begin to send your plagues. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Viewers around the world, wherever you are, wherever you have gathered right now, in front of your television, in front of your laptop, we are praying. Right now, we're going to pray concerning the locusts. What is a locust? A locust, it, it eats where it has not planted. So tonight, we're going to pray that any locust tonight, whatever the locust has eaten from you, I decree and I declare over your life that after this conference, after this conference, every locust in your life shall die. Lift up your voice, stretch your prayer, begin to pray, begin to pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we pray. We command over every locust, we command over every locust tonight. We command the fire of God to burn up and see every locust tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So tonight we're going to pray for the service tonight. And we're asking the Lord God himself to manifest himself. We want manifestation. We want manifestation. So tonight we're praying, Holy God, let yourself, let you be known in this place. We pray for the word, that the word will come forth with power and might. We're praying tonight for manifestation. We've been on fasting. 
We've been a fasting and we want to see results tonight. So in the name of Jesus, we pray for manifestation. Yeah, 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 yeah
Shayaba. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Makosata Katayaba Dabas. Can we continue to bless the name of the Lord? Can we continue to lift up the name of Jesus? We thank you, Hallelujah. God. We give you the glory, Jehovah God. We worship and adore you, Jehovah God. There is no one like you today, O oh God. Nor has there ever been and there will forever not be, O oh God. Anyone who can compare to you. We bless you tonight, O oh God, and we lift up your name. For all the world to see. We lift up your banner up high, O oh God. For the whole world to know that there's no other God. There is no one that can compare to you oh god we humble ourselves tonight and we give you the highest praise we say take over and take the glory tonight take over and take the glory tonight oh god you have your way oh god tonight whatever you will to do holy spirit we give you full control over our lives tonight in the name of jesus whatever you need to do oh god come and save come and heal and deliver your people tonight we don't want to return home the same we want to say that we have been with the lord father we exalt you we give you the praise we honor your name for your name is from everlasting to everlasting you are the same yesterday today and forever there's no shadow of turning with you oh god and we bless you for being our god we thank you for being our savior we thank you even for being here tonight we welcome your holy spirit we welcome you holy spirit we welcome you holy spirit Spirit, Spirit of the living God, thou art welcome in this place. Can you please bless the name of the Lord? Can somebody join me for just one minute in blessing the holy name of the Lord? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. You are exalted in this sanctuary, oh God. Your name is lifted up. Oh God, above every other name at the mention of the name of Jesus demons tremble at the mention of the name Jesus there shall be deliverance at the mention of your name oh God freedom shall come to those who need oh God at the mention of your name sickness and disease must flee in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus thank you Jesus we thank you and we give you the glory Lord John in the mighty name of Jesus amen can somebody just clap their hands and welcome the Holy Spirit can you just clap your hands you are highly lifted up awesome God you are highly lifted up Mighty God, you are highly lifted up, awesome God, you are highly lifted up, mighty God, say you are highly, you are highly Awesome God, you are, you are, you are highly lifted up, mighty God, mighty God, say you are highly, you are highly lifted up, awesome God, awesome God, awesome God. you are, you are, you are, you are. Take a 
mighty eye on me Red cross we standing on Of your holy name Lord we bow, Lord we bow And worship Oh, oh, oh. 
all praises, all praises be to the King of kings and the Lord. Our God, he is wonderful. He is wonderful. All praises, all praises, all praises, praises be to the King, King of kings. Tonight you will receive a blessing. Ah, 
Let me tell you, the devil can start it, but he cannot end it. Amen. It is an empty tomb. That tomb is empty. Yes. One thing I want you to understand: everybody can die. Everybody can be crucified. You remember, it wasn't only Jesus alone that was crucified. Three of them. So crucifixion. Anybody at all can go through crucifixion. Anybody at all can die. But it's not everybody who can leave their tombs. Amen. 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 It's not everybody that can resurrect. Amen. Jesus. For that tells you and I that the resurrection power is still at work. Amen. We are going to pray. And your prayer is, Lord, let this conference set me loose. Let this conference work it up everything that is dead in my life. I refuse to see my marriage die. I refuse to see my business die. I refuse to see my education remain dead. It will rise up again. It will rise up again. Lift up your voice that today conference will bring revival unto you. Come on, lift your voice. You will rise again. Lift your voice. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, The man of God will be a blessing unto you. The man of God will be a blessing unto you. The conference will be a blessing unto you. God will use him to speak to you. God will use him to give you revelation. God will use him to work it up anything that is there. Alepaya dosha, the two alpoya. Alepaya de la bosha, alepaya la boca paya, mantoli de la de bosha, alepaya de la bosha. In Jesus mighty name, in Jesus mighty name. Amen. I want you to look at your neighbor and ask your neighbor, Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> come on, come on, ask your neighbor, Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> Are you ready? 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 Let me tell you, for you to know that you carry the resurrection power in you. This conference, you will give somebody high five, and that person's empty bones will rise up. Let me tell you, I said you carry the resurrection power. So look at the neighbor standing next to you and tell the neighbor, I carry something that you need. I carry something that you need. Come on, come on, come on. Tell the person, there's something in me that you need. In the dryness in your life, after giving you this high fire, there shall be resurrection. There shall be meeting that dry bones. That dry bones will rise up. Give somebody a high five. Come on, come on, come on, come on. 
Come on. I said give somebody a high five. I didn't say give them a, a shoulder. Give them a high five. It is a prophetic direction. Give them a high five. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to take this opportunity. Come on, help me celebrate the workers of this ministry. Come on, let's celebrate them. They are doing an amazing job. From the top to the last person at the back. Let's celebrate them. Let's celebrate them. Celebrate them. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Come on, let's celebrate our online viewers. Celebrate We Church Ghana. We Church America. Come on, Jamaica. The islands. Celebrate them. Celebrate them. Celebrate them. Celebrate them. Please help me celebrate the mama of the house, the pastor one of the house. Mama, we love you, Pastor Constance, and the Winnie B family. Come on, let's celebrate them. They are watching. Let's celebrate them. Let's celebrate them. Tonight, we have a speaker in the house. Uh, but before I introduce the speaker, please help me. Let's celebrate the woman of God. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate the woman of God. Let's celebrate Hallelujah. Mrs. 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 Uh, Quartin. Yes, come on, come on. Let's celebrate Mrs. Quartin. Help me do it better. We church. Ah. She is a psalmist. If you don't know, that is it. She sings. And I pray that from today to Saturday, the Lord will touch her to give us a song. Amen. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Amen. Yes. I, 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 thought, I thought that you were coming with the whole squad. <laughs> we church, without wasting much time, help me bring onto the podium the only one reverend I have that I can call him any time he will pick. Whether he's in the country, he's outside the country. When I say, Reverend, I need an advice. I need revelations. He start downloading onto me. He start encouraging me. Let me tell you, this ministry, you will see everybody. Uh, listen, all the engines that are working behind the scenes. You will see all of them. And he's one of them that encourages me, pray for me. Tell me, Solomon, you can do it. Keep on pushing. I watch you all the time. When I'm in Ghana, I'm watching you. When I'm in here, Canada, I'm watching you. These are the fathers we need to encourage us. Ministry is, is a long drive. It's a long drive. Far away from here to uh, uh, Bahamas. You would drive until you die. So we need people to encourage us. Please. Without wasting much time, help me bring to the podium Reverend Yao Kwate. Come on, make a joyful noise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's an honor to be here today. It's been a long time waiting. Please, you can have your seat. Please. Uh, we go way back. I always call him Apostle Solomon, the real apostle. But it's been a journey. I mean, meeting a man after the heart of God who really wants to do God's work. And coming back from Ghana um, in September last year after being in Ghana for about five years uh, on a business um, tour, came back and I found We Church. And I said, My God. Great things are happening. <laughs> From glory to glory to glory. And I'm happy. I'm excited for Jesus. Amen. Coming back, you know, I've been revitalized. We've sharpened. You know, seeing what God is doing in the brethren. Things that are happening. And I'm glad to be here tonight, We Church. I am glad. Let's give Jesus a clap offering for We Church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for the man of God who has refused to quit in the midst of every challenge, every trial, he's still standing. Let's give God a clap offering for the man of God, Apostle Solomon himself. 
It's Anana and his wife and family. I'm excited to be here today. And when he called me to be part of what is happening here, I said to myself, Lord, do I have what it takes to be, bring a message to the We Church? What message are you bringing? And even to top it up, he said, the tombs. He talked about it. I said, I've never preached on the tombs before. What is going on with this tomb issue? <laughs> but the Holy Spirit has all the understanding and revelation. And as I went through the scriptures, he was able to show me something about the tombs. And I thank you, man of God, for opening my eyes to the tomb. And I pray today I'll be able to bring something to you because the ministry, my wife and I have Pastor Cherian right here, um, is into building the body of Christ. I always said to her, my phone lines are open 24-7. So anytime anyone needs me, even the car broke in the day, as long as my car can drive, I'll be on Highway 401 to support and help. So we've been building the body of Christ and on, on um, Facebook Live, we have what we call the Kairos Run with the Word. We've been cut three times a week. We minister to build up the body of Christ because you don't know who is going through what situation or challenge. But just one word can save a life. Amen. So the Lord has been using us to bless the body of Christ at the same time. So when he called of me, I said, Lord, I thank you for this opportunity, but I'm going to do my best to bring this message on the tombs. Amen. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We know you are here right now. Take charge and take control. Have dominion. And that every life that is sitting here, every life that is watching, the Father, Lord God, need water to drink. Give them something to drink tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Any soul in distress, in any challenge, let salvation find them wherever they are. In the name of Jesus. And we pray that your children will be blessed tonight. Use me, Father, as a vessel to deliver this message to them. In Jesus' name, amen. So tonight, the message is all about the tomb. The tomb is empty. And I'm going to ask, I don't know if you do that here, if you have people to read the scriptures. Um, I would like somebody to read John chapter 20. And uh, I wanted to skip some few verses. I wanted to just concentrate on verses 3 to 8. But I would like us to read 1 to 18. 1 to 18. John chapter 20, 1 to 18. John 20, verse 1. The first day of the week cometh, Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark. Unto the sepulchre and see that the, the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciples whom Jesus loved and said unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple and came to the tomb. So they ran but together. And the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the tomb. And he stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him and went into the tomb and seeth the linen clothes lie. And the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the tomb, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own homes. But Mary stood without, without at the, the tomb weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb and see two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. And they said unto him, Woman, why do you weep? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. 
And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus said unto the woman, Woman, why do you weep? Whom seeketh thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am yet to ascend to my father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. Amen. I would like to concentrate on between three to eight. Now, before I go in, I would like to just give a little history that Jesus, before his departure, had told the disciples to wait in the upper room. And he said, pray, wait on the upper room for something is about to happen. Jesus was telling them that there was an unfinished business that needs to be taking place. But it's going to come. But they should wait. Now, when we read the scripture in John, it says that two men began to run towards the tomb when they heard that Jesus has risen. And where I want to concentrate more is that when they got to the tomb, one of them looked but could not see. And one of them looked and saw something different. It says that Peter therefore went out and the other disciples went, they ran to the tomb. So both of them ran together. The other disciples around Peter came to the tomb first Stooping down low, he looked in and saw that the living clothes were lying there. Yet, they didn't go in. Listen to this. But when Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb, he saw the living clothes were lying there. And the handkerchief that was around his head was not lying with the living clothes, but was folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first went in also and saw and believed. So the question is that, what did they see when they looked closer into the tomb and saw the separation of the linens, the, the one that wrapped the body, the one that wrapped the head, they were separated. What did they see that made them believe? Because when Jesus was leaving, he said, I'm going to die and I'll rise in three days. But the Bible says when they ran and they got in there, they looked and they saw a separation of the linen that wrapped his body. And then when Peter came, he looked and he saw that there was a separation from the one that was covered his head and it was folded. You see, when we read the scripture, sometimes we don't understand certain things because it's not explained. But the Holy Spirit knows because when this took place, the Holy Ghost was there. Because it took the Holy Ghost for Jesus to rise from the dead. So the Holy Ghost that dwells in you can reveal unto you the mind of God and the heart of the master. Because we cannot live this Christian life without the Holy Spirit. Today you find that many people have neglected and pushed the Holy Spirit on the side and think they can do it all. I've met people who are using their education to fight off the truth of the Holy Ghost. But I'm here to tell you that Paul the Apostle, with all his degrees that he had, said that, look, everything I've attained, I count it as dung. It is nothing because when I met Jesus, I understood that there is a higher power that goes beyond my education. And it takes Jesus Christ for me to accomplish anything on earth. The Bible says the soul the linen and it was folded let me explain to you the secret behind the folded linen in the olden days in the Jewish religion when a master or a king 
or one who is in a higher authority or even a father when they sit on the dining hall table I don't know about you but I can remember that as a child growing up with my father we had a dining hall table that has six chairs two here, two here and this side but unfortunately the only person who eats on that table was my father I don't know if you can agree with me and the rest of the children we eat in the kitchen and for years I never understood why then I asked my mother I said shut up so when I came to Canada I got married and had kids I said to myself this can never happen I will eat with all the six chairs filled and I've been doing it for, since because I still don't understand why only my father will buy a dining hall table six chairs and every time lunch is served he's the only one enjoying the table with six empty chairs taking one And the interesting part is when you go to that dining hotel when it's finished, whoever is going to clear that table, that, that, the, 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 the plates and the bowls, he leaves a piece of meat on it as a reward. My brother, I believe you have been through that before. I only came to know that most of my friends have been through it already. So when I came to Canada, I said, no, no more. Because those times, the only type of meat you get is the neck of the chicken or maybe the head. Or the chicken food. So when I came, I made a vow in Canada. I'll never eat any piece of that nature of the, of the chicken. Now when I go to the store, I want the chicken breast. The choicest part, the one that my father used to enjoy. That is why I enjoy now. Hallelujah! Oh, sometimes you got to enjoy yourself. Now, when the first master or the father of that home finish eating, there is a handkerchief that is always set for him to clean his hands. Now in a Jewish religion, when a master finish eating and he leaves the handkerchief unfolded, it means he has finished eating. He's not coming back. When, he come, when you go to clean the table and you realize that the, 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 the napkin, the handkerchief, has been folded, but some of the food have been left. It means that he is coming back. I said he is coming back. So when they go to the tomb and they saw the napkin folded, it reminded that Jesus said, I am coming back. I am coming back. It is an unfinished business. Hallelujah. I said it is an empty tomb. But there is a handkerchief that is folded and it says, I am coming back. Hallelujah. So when they came and they saw, and they saw the handkerchief was folded, Jesus was sending them a message. I am coming back. I am coming back. So they understood and they went home. But the Bible says that Mary was still crying. <laughs> she was still because she did not get it. So the angels had to come and tell her, What are you doing here, Mary? Didn't he tell you that you rise? He's risen. So go home and relax. But those who saw the handkerchief knew that he has risen. While all this was going on, the three disciples were waiting in the upper room. Because when the when the handkerchief was folded, I cannot tell you if it happened when. The stone was rolled. Watch this. Now, when the stone was rolled, what the king or Herod and the men in those days decided was that there was a message that had come to them that somebody would steal the body of Jesus. So what they did, they rolled the stone. When the stone was rolled after Jesus' body was put in to the, em the empty tomb, the Roman Empire had a seal. They put a red seal on the tomb. And then also, there was a soldier that was kept in that place to guard the tomb. Because they did not want the body to be stolen. But it's interesting. Very interesting. 
when I read, I found out that if they come and they find out that the body has been stolen, there was 12 soldiers that were assigned that would take turns whilst the tomb was in place. So I don't know if it was a six hour shift or eight hour shift. But if they come, they find the tomb that the body had been stolen, all those men would die. So they kept, so there was three. The tomb, the seal, and the soldiers who guarded the empty tomb or the body in the tomb. Hoping that somebody would not touch it. But I love it because you know why? In order for you to win a battle with the enemy, you need to go in the spiritual realm. You understand this? So the tomb is a structure that keeps the dead body in place, but not the spirit. Are you hearing me? That is why the enemy has been trying to fight you for years. But he has been attacking you in the flesh. But because the Holy Spirit is in you, he cannot win. Because the spirit in you is greater than he that is in the world. So watch this. When Jesus was on the cross and he said, I yield my spirit unto the Father. And he gave up the ghost. They thought the battle had ended. But Jesus had just begun the battle. Because he knew that in order to defeat the enemy, you have to be in the spirit. For the Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not what can now, but they are mighty through God unto the pulling down of the stronghold. So if you're going to defeat the enemy, you have to be in the spirit. So whilst the attention of Rome was on the tomb, which was a dead body, and they were guarding it with all their life, in the spirit, Jesus descended into the earth and said, Satan, I have come against you, and I'm here to bind you and take the keys to hell and death from your hand. And whilst they were busy guarding the tomb, Jesus was in, down in hate, battling the enemy to take away the keys. Listen to me. Today, I don't know what is going on in your life, but it seems all hell is breaking loose. But I'm here to tell you that the battle is not over until it is over. It has just started because the master has folded his handkerchief. And whilst you are busy fighting in the flesh, in the spiritual realm, the angels of heaven have been released on your portion to fight your battles for you. That is why sometimes you think that there is nothing happening, but I'm here to tell you something is happening in the spirit. Hallelujah. He said, I yield my spirit unto you. And as he gave up the ghost and the human beings, I don't know, but in Africa, they love funerals a lot. They will put a dead body in a coffin. Sometimes dead bodies stay in the morgue for a year. One year. And lately there are dead bodies that they freeze. So if you're a singer, they freeze your body in a, in a, in a singing standing style and they'll put you in a place where people will pass by and watch you. But it's a dead body standing, frozen. That's how they adore. Yes, it is. In different parts of the world, it's treated differently. But let me tell you something. Jesus knew that the attention would be on the body. So he let them have the peace of guarding the body. So that he can concentrate in the spiritual realm. So whilst all the quaternions of the army of Rome were guarding a dead body that had gone to waste in the spiritual realm, Jesus has descended into the kingdom of the devil. And they were be if they knew that Jesus was going to do that, they would never have allowed him to die. But I'm here to tell you that the God that we serve is a strategist. He knows you're going in and you're coming out. He's the master of all creation. He's the battle and axe holder. He's the king of kings and the victorious one. He knows how to fight your battle. 
That's when David understood. He said to the Lord, should I go and fight or you should go? And the Lord said, no, this one, leave it up to me. And in some stars, you find that God will send the angels of heaven and the sound of running horses, sound of horses, and the physical army will be running for their lives. That's a spiritual battle. Hallelujah. I found in some churches today, people go to prayer meetings and they take cutlasses and sticks and they say they are beating the devil. We are cutting the devil in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. It is not a physical battle. Because Satan is a spirit. When I came in today, when I walked in, somebody was talking about the grasshoppers whilst they were singing. But the Bible talks about the canker worm, the locust, and the caterpillar. Listen, sometimes when we say that scripture, we say it quickly. The canker worm, the locust, and the caterpillar. It is not that quick. Slow down. Because you see, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the locust, and the palmer worm, they eat in stages. The caterpillar will come and eat and you go home. The palmer worm will come. The canker worm will come. So by the time they finish eating your farm, there is no evidence. Nothing. That there was a farm here. If some, uh, there was a farm here last week. No, there's no, 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 there's no evidence. There's the same method as the devil. He came to steal, kill, and destroy. I won't have the time to preach that today, but another time I will. Because steal, kill, and destroy are three different stages that the enemy uses to destroy the body of Christ. He first comes in to steal. And when nobody is able to save you, you move on to kill. And when it destroys you, there's no evidence. That's why when you go downtown, you see somebody sleeping under the bridge. And they tell, this man is a homeless man, but you're a doctor in Toronto General Hospital. He said, no, 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 I can't believe it. Because he has gone through the three stages. But watch this. The Bible says that God will restore to you what the canker worm, the caterpillar. Listen! We are talking about God. He said, where there is no evidence that once you are a believer, I am God and I can be able to destroy I'll restore you back onto yourself. Amen. So watch this. The tomb kept the body. The dead body. But the spirit realm, God, Jesus has descended into the realms of hate to bind the strong man and take away the keys. Jesus knew that the disciples that he was sending to go and bring the good news of Christ needed the Holy Spirit. And they could not afford to face the full brunt of the enemy. Because he has been notorious when Jesus was alive. You come to him and try Jesus. Imagine Satan has no respect for Jesus. That you come and tempt the king of kings on the mount and say that eat this bread. Who dare you? So there was an unfinished business. So when the napkin was folded, he says that, wait, so I'm coming. Like I'm sure they will say, hasta la vista, baby. I am coming back. I have an unfinished business. And let me go down and get it done. So that the disciples who are waiting in the upper room can be able to go to, to fulfill the gospel of Jesus Christ. Are you hearing me? Jesus knew uh, something got to be done in order for the gospel to flow. Break the resistance. Bind the strong man. Put him in captivity. Take the keys to hell and death. Give it to the body of Christ. Then now go and preach the gospel of Jesus. Are you hearing me? He's a God of strategy. Yeah? And he knew uh, when the disciples were in the upper room. Waiting. All this was going on. In hate. Let me tell you something. It was not a war that went on. Nobody can fight Jesus and win. But Jesus went in and gave his authority. He said, give me the keys. Give me the keys, devil. Give it to me. Let me tell you something. I'm speaking to the body of Christ. In the book of Jesus, he said, God has given you what? Authority and dominion. We are never supposed to fight with the devil physically. Never. Never. I've gone to places where I've seen people. 
running in the church, chasing Satan. I don't know what they see, but why are you chasing Satan? For what? I've seen people taking Coco to church in Toronto, and they had to bless it for them to you take Coco and sit in the bus to a crusade for a man of God to bless. What are you talking about? It is not a physical battle. It is a spiritual battle. And if you understand the things of the spirit, you understand that Jesus Christ had to descend down to the above, the place of age and take the keys from the enemy so that you and I don't have to go around chasing Satan with a machete or a cutlass to cut him down. But all what you got to do is that if you know the word, I command you to get out here in the name of Jesus. Because the Bible says, at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I'm here to tell you coronavirus has a knee. Cancer has a knee. Sickness has a knee. Diabetes has a knee. Blood pressure has a knee. The Bible says, at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee, every knee, every knee, not some, every knee, shall bow to come to worship Jesus Christ. Because on the cross of Calvary, he nailed every disease, every sickness on that cross and hammered it and said, it is finished. It is over. It is over. It is over. folded the handkerchief the bible said when they went and they looked at it they understood what the folding of the handkerchief meant so they went home and they went to have spaghetti and some sauce those who wanted pizza without uh, meat they got it because it was a time for you to sit down and relax and take it easy because something has happened in the atmosphere and the body of Christ today are hustling around, not understanding that the handkerchief has been folded. I said the handkerchief has been folded. The master said, I am coming back. Take it easy. You got to sit down. And relax. And if you have a high heel, Those who want to walk like him, Kardashian, walk like him, Kardashian. Are you hearing me? You got to take it easy. Because the only reason why you are uneasy because you don't understand what has happened. But if you understand what has happened in the spiritual realm, and they say the tomb is empty, you know that the job is already done. The Bible says, Jesus said to the Father, you will never allow me to suffer corruption. You see, Lazarus went four days. And when they told them to open the tomb, Mary said to them, it might be stinking by now. Jesus said, go ahead, open it. That is why Jesus never went to a funeral. And I thank God he's not on earth to go to funerals. Because if Jesus come to a funeral, all the dead bodies will wake up out of the coffin. And some of us who have never seen a dead person wake up, for me, I'll be the fastest. I'll break the 100 meter record and I'll run away. I'll not be around. Don't even wait for me. I'll be gone. No. He said, open. And when he went there, he said, he's sleeping. <laughs> Wake up, Lazarus. And he woke up. Untie him. Now, here's the key. Jesus has the power to lay his life and raise it up. So when they went into the tomb, the linen cloth was already unwrapped. They didn't need anybody to unwrap it because he has power to lay his life and raise it again. Hallelujah. I've come to declare to you today the fight that you are fighting, the reason why you have not won is because you are not handed it over to Jesus. And when King David gave all the battles to the Lord, the Lord said he is a man after my own heart because he understood spiritual warfare. Today I have to hear announce to you the tomb is empty. It contains a carcass. And when you go in there, that's all what you get. But that was set to 
sideline the eyes of the Romans so they can concentrate on guarding the tomb whilst the real action was on this side. Hallelujah. I said, God is a strategist. Today, you might be in a position not knowing what to do. But I've come to tell you the tomb is empty. What are you going to do? Are you going to stand and gaze? Or you're going to go to the upper room and wait for power? You got to make a decision for yourself. Because if you stay at the tomb, you get a carcass. But when you go into the upper room, you get anointing. Hallelujah. Jesus said, wait. For I'll be coming back. And the moment they rolled the stone, the battle began. From the cross, it started. Went to the place of hate and battled the enemy. I don't know what you are fighting today. But the answer is in Jesus Christ. The son of the living God. Because the Bible says that immediately he rose as he had promised in the upper room. Something happened. The power of God came upon them because the tomb was empty and something has transitioned. And Peter who was, was so timid he could not even speak a word. I remember when I was young and he told me that this guy likes you my brother will be gone. I was so timid, I couldn't speak to a woman. You know, he was a timid man. He couldn't speak. But when the tomb was shut, and Jesus wrote, he preached one message, and 3,000 people came to the Lord Jesus Christ. Something has happened. I said, the tomb is empty. It is empty. There is nothing to behold, except the body of Jesus. What are you going to do? You got to make a decision. Today we are going to pray. Because where I'm coming from, I'm coming from the standpoint of power. And I want every believer to begin to rise in this era. Because a lot of things that we are looking for has already been done. And the Lord is saying it's about time you rise and stand for the truth. For I have come that you may have life and life abundantly. The tomb where you are looking for me, I'm not there anymore. It is empty. But I'm alive by the power of the Holy Spirit. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you got to receive it today. Because the Bible says when the Holy Spirit came upon them, they became different men altogether. Those who were not bold became bold. Those who were might, became mighty became mightier. And they were able to preach the gospel of Jesus with power. You can do it. You can do it. Why? Because the tomb is empty. The Roman soldiers stood there. Did not know what was going on. But you and I today can understand what was really going on. Jesus took the keys from the enemy. And that power has been given to you and I. Then it's not just to make you feel good. But it's to make you understand that there's a power that is in you. And you have to stand up and begin to exercise the power. It doesn't matter how old you are. The power is available to every one of you today. When I heard about the epidemic, I got angry. And I've been praying to God ever since. The Lord give us the spirit of the sons of Issachar. That we can know anytime when something is about approaching. That we can get ready. Hallelujah. Just as in the Old Testament. The prophet will come and tell them this is about to happen. And they will prepare themselves. Today the empty tomb signals what was done in Rome. And any of you here today can receive if you have not received the Holy Spirit, we're going to give you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus. So that the power that was present to raise Jesus from the dead, you will have that power. Because the handkerchief has been folded. The master said, I'm coming back again. It is not ended. It has just begun. What is your problem? What challenge are you facing? Is it sickness or disease or illness? It is a situation in your flesh. 
that you are struggling with. Let me tell you something. Jesus has taken all of it and put it on the cross of Calvary. And he made an open show to the devil. He said, watch this. It is done. You can pray and believe God for anything that you want. Somewhere in September last year when I came back from Ghana, I went to a medical test. And I did my blood works. <laughs> the doctor called me immediately. He said, you got to come and see me quickly. I know what that means. When I went, he said, this, 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 that. And I'm going to put you on medication. <laughs> and I remembered what was done on Calvary. He took my sins and my sickness and my diseases and nailed it on the cross. And I began to pray. Because everything that the doctor said was true that I saw. But they were not facts. The fact is that he took my diseases and my sickness and nailed it and destroyed it on Calvary. So I began to claim it for myself. In about a week or two or three in a month, I started running, exercising, and changed my diet. I went back for my first test. He said, I see a total change in your body. Let me tell you something. Calvary is for you. Everything you need, your blessings, your healings is on Calvary. It's done. Everything you need. Man of God, I've been believing God for a financier, for a mega project. Mega project, huge. And I called my wife when I was in Ghana. I said, you need to come. Come back and let's pray. In about two months, I got a phone call. And this company said, yes, we are going to finance the project. Are you hearing me? They said, we will finance the project. And we started the procedure. Everything they are asking for, non-disclosure agreement, everything we are passing it through to them. And we are trusting God that it will go all the way to the end. Listen, everything you need is in Jesus. It's in Jesus. Listen, I don't have a PhD, man of God. I don't have a master's. Sometimes when I go on the Zoom meetings and these men are talking about some calculations in scientific and agriculture and economics and chemistry and then commerce, I'm sitting and watching them as a Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Risata Kapahaya. Le Kapasodi. And when they tell me to speak, my brother, I try to limit my words because I don't, I don't have the lingo that they use. But I know that on Calvary, Provision has already been made for me. Hallelujah. It's in Jesus. The tomb is empty. It tells me it is done. Hallelujah. So I go in there by faith. Because our salvation is by faith. Our redemption is by faith. On the cross of Calvary. And at the end. We get to sign some documents. Amen. Let me tell you something. Joseph, Solomon, all these men, it was God. And if you are going to make it on this earth, it is God. The tomb is empty. Jesus has given the Holy Spirit to them. The evidence was in the upper room. And see what happened in the lives of men who were fishermen. They only caught fish. Only Jesus showed them how to catch men. But he gave them the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And he said, that spirit, I give it unto you. You have access to the Holy Spirit. And if you learn to have a relationship with the Holy Ghost. And depend on the Holy Ghost. Speak to him in the morning, afternoon and evening. Wherever you are, call on the Holy Spirit. If you are driving, call the Holy Spirit. If you are in a marital problem, call the Holy Spirit. If you are in abuse, call the Holy Spirit. He will never, never forsake you. Never. You show up. I said the tomb is empty. The tomb is empty. What is your issue? Whatever you are believing God tonight, you are going to pray, man of God. And the Holy Spirit is going to move. Tonight, you are going to be empowered in a different fashion. And whatever you could need to do, you will do it. Those of you who are believing God for a business idea, he'll give it to you. Look, do you know that most of the billionaires and the multi-millionaires in the world never finish school? Check. 
Bill Gates, Facebook, all these guys never finished school. But something transformed their lives. And I said, if these people are unbelievers, how much more you and I that have the Holy Spirit, that Jesus went on the cross and rose from the dead, that we are alive and we serve the living God. How much more you and I? I said the tomb is empty. So all the possibilities are possible. Everything is possible. Because it was a promise that when I die and I rise again, there's going to be a change, a shift in gear. And it's happening now. There are churches in America that are buying shopping malls, man of God. There are churches in America that own banks. There are churches in America that are issuing credit cards. I'm telling you, in America now, they own banks. Parker Sindum, you know Parker Sindum in Ghana? He went to America in Chicago from Ghana and bought a bank. He owns a bank in America. I said the tomb is empty and the possibilities are available. It doesn't matter how young you are. Man of God. There are things I can't talk about right now. Do you know that the Holy Ghost is an ICT technician? The Holy Ghost is a software developer. I said that one day he gave me an idea about developing a software for the judicial services of Ghana. Judicial services. The whole country. I have it here. Holy Spirit. And you know something? I tried doing um, web design. The 01010101. My brother, I got 0 over 10. 0 over 10. But today, by the reason of that empty tomb and what happened on Calvary, it is accessible. The tomb is empty and you can do it. The possibilities are within you. Don't limit yourself and think, oh me, I cannot do it. Listen, there was a lady, you see if I give the term, I will finish today. There was a lady who had natural long hair. Natural. For some reason, went to a crusade when my bishop he's passed away saw her and said woman of God your hair do you have any weaves in it he said oh, no I don't he said it's natural he said I prophesy over your life that you have a contract that your hair will be used on products listen it wasn't too long that woman hair is on products in Ghana the picture of her won a contract listen do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? You are an explosive ready to explode. You are a nuclear bomb on earth. You don't just live in Scarborough and Mississauga. You are in Mississauga because God wants to use you to change Mississauga. You are a force to reckon with. I said the tomb is empty. And Jesus has risen. The possibilities are open. What are you going to do? I wanted to open a company and I was looking for a name of the company. I sat down and said, Holy Spirit, help me. My wife said, Yao, tell go to the Holy Spirit. You, you, you have to go to the Holy Spirit. Because <laughs> sometimes I forget. Go to the Holy Spirit. I went to the Holy Spirit. I said, I need a name for the business. I sat down and then the name came into two portions. B-R-E V-I-E-W Brave View Group of Companies. The Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit said, Brave View Group of Companies. I said, what do you mean by companies? He said, because what I've given you will have subsidiary of shipping, airline, ICT, mobile phone company. You will have all this. Are you hearing me? I said the tomb. I registered the business quickly with speed, quickly. And I, I, I got it done in Ghana. And I don't know how this thing is going to happen, but it's already started as a consulting firm, consulting with Canadian companies that want to extend their businesses out of Canada. Man of God, I'm talking to powerful people. Powerful people on Zoom. I'm a shy person on Zoom, but listen, the anointing changes everything. 
Because the tomb is empty. Powerful people, CEOs of companies, talking to me. I said, Father, I give you the praise and the glory. It's not unto me, but it's unto you. Amen. So I'm showing you tonight that the possibilities are within you. Now, not tomorrow. Now. You have to yield to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, show me. Teach me. Quicken my mortal being. Strengthen me on every area of my life and cause me to be alive again. Just as you rose Jesus from the dead. Show me and give me that unction and you do it. And you find yourself in 2021 at the end by December, you're going to come back to the man of God. a man of God. I'm sowing a seed of $50,000. This is just the, the, this, this is just the breakfast, man of God. It's just the breakfast. I'm coming back with supper. Are you hearing me? I remember before my spiritual father passed away, I was driving with him one time in Accra. Going, driving this 4 by 4 we got to a restaurant when I was young in secondary school. That restaurant was fashionable. And I said to him that, ah, Bishop, that restaurant, why is it inactive? I said, by now somebody could have brought McDonald's to Ghana already. And he said, yeah, yeah, somebody could have done it. He asked me, so why do you think it's not happening? I said, maybe McDonald's franchise is too expensive. He never spoke to me again for three months. For three good months, I called this man of God. Called him. Send him text messages. I went to his house, knock on his door. He would not open the door. And I, I was wondering, what have I done? What did I do? So one day, he sent me a message. He said, meet me in church. And when I met him in church, that Wednesday night, he was preaching on faith. And that message, he said to something that I'll never forget. He said, the, when you look at the Roman Catholic churches, there are old women who have been in the church for about 40 to 50 years and they are very loyal and faithful. They will get up in the morning and go and pray and they will do the mass every time they go without even understanding because in the Roman Catholic church, they don't read the Bible like you and I. It's only the priest that preaches the word. But they go faithfully. And when they are taking the, is it the mass, they go, uh, I don't know, there's, there's a Latin thing, recital that they, 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 they recite and then they will end up and say Amen. Everything they recite in Latin, Amen. And he said that yeah, if in Latin they are saying that we are going to kill you and the women are accepting that Amen, it means that they have to be killed. But they don't know what is going on. But they are afraid that they will not be killed. How much more you and I that serve a living God, that the Holy Ghost would tell you exactly the mind of God. Man of God, that day it was like a bullet. Something hit me from the pews. Boom! By the time I woke up, it was about two hours after speaking in tongues. The next day, he invited me to his house. He said, yeah, let me tell you something. Our friends in New York who have private jets and they fly to Paris in the morning with their wife to go and have breakfast in Paris and come back to New York. So what are you telling me that McDonald's franchise is expensive? It means your faith is low. And it's going to be difficult for me to move around with you. You said the day when you made that statement, I was taking you to one of the top clothing designers in Ghana to take your measurements so that your line of suits will be made for you. That's how much I believe in you. But when you said McDonald's franchise, $1.8 million dollars it's expensive. He said, yeah, my friends have private planes. Breakfast in Paris. And they'll come back in a few hours. And you say, McDonald's franchise. Let me tell you, I'm talking about possibilities. The tomb is empty. The door is open. Believe in God. Me, I've started looking for my car, oh man of God. I said, I'm tired of smoking cars and exhaust pipes. I'm already looking at some Rolls Royces and some something. Me, I've made my choice. I'm done. Yeah. I'm tired. Man of God, I'm tired.
Every time when I go on the internet, I'm looking for a car, they ask, what is the price range? I said, 3,000 to 5,000. Why? The one the Holy Spirit said, well, yeah, why are you in 5,000? When people are in 100,000, why are you limiting God? There's nothing wrong. I said the tomb is open. The possibilities are there. So tonight, I'm encouraging you, every one of you here, please don't limit yourself. The reason why I gave this testimony is because in this era of pandemic, the rich are getting richer. New ideas are coming. People are beginning new Bitcoin companies in this pandemic. Canada, for the first time, has the nation's first Bitcoin company. Canada. So we should take advantage and say, Lord, in the midst of this pandemic, what are we going to do? Give me ideas. It could be maybe a new medication for what they call the virus, which is maybe organic. It doesn't have chemicals in it. We need an organic virus medication that you can maybe drink and then the virus will be gone. God will give you because we are not asking. Seek and you will find. Ask it shall be given. We are not asking. We are being carried away by the news night by night. The virus is changing. It's doing this. It's doing, oh my God, I can't watch the TV again. No, no. He said, Lord, show me something. And it's going to be done. I want you to rise tonight. I'm going to ask Pastor Cherian to come. And I want you to pray for everyone here tonight. I'm going to ask you to pray for everyone tonight. Because I believe by the end of this year, this ministry will not be the same again. The tomb is empty. Gears have shifted. Change has come. And it's going to happen here. You, you will see it. Every one of you. You come back and give a testimony. Man of God, I can't believe what God is saying to me. It's going to happen. I spoke to my son the other day. I said, all the music producers that I knew when I was growing up, most of them are dead. And I prayed for him that you are going to be the next top music producer in North America. I've laid hands on him and I've prayed for him and I know it's going to happen, man of God. That the Christians will come to you. They don't have to go to these unbeliever producers that make them swear and curse and dishonor women in their songs. That they'll sink clean, clean scripture, things that will bring life and respect women and respect society and fathers and mothers in their song prayed for him is going to happen I want you to pray hallelujah well just lift up your hands this night amen oh you are holy only you are holy let us worship Jesus you, you are, are holy, holy. only you are holy Lamb of God Lamb of God, seated at the right hand of the Father, you are holy, holy, worship Him, the Holy Spirit is going to move in this place, oh, you are holy, holy, lift up your hands, Online, lift up your hands to Jesus. You are holy. You are holy, Jesus. Holy, you are holy. holy. Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Lamb of God. Oh, you seated at the right hand of the Father. You are holy. Holy. Of God, you are seated. Oh, Lamb of God, oh, seated at the right hand of the Father. You are holy. Oh, you are holy. Lamb of God, Lamb of God, oh, you're seated at the right hand. The Father, you are holy. Hallelujah. Holy you. Hallelujah to Jesus. You are holy. 
I was waiting upstairs, the word of the Lord came to me. And the Lord is saying to this ministry, they are going to be a manifestation of heaven on earth. That what happens in heaven, how many of us know that we do not live from earth to heaven, we live from heaven to earth. What is in heaven must come down. We must go up to heaven. Amen? In the realm of the spirit. And God is saying there's going to be a manifestation of his presence in this house not many days from now. There's going to be a shift in your worship. There's going to be a shift in your function. Heaven. Revelation from heaven is going to be manifested in this place. The glory of heaven, the presence of heaven, there's going to be a change in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. There's going to be a change in the environment. You will see that the things you do before, they're going to enhance in glory. They're going to enhance in glory. Because the Spirit of God is going to manifest in this house like never before. It's going to manifest, Pastor Solomon. You know why? You have prayed. And the Lord is saying that he has heard and he has answered. It's going to happen because you have prayed and God is saying to you, you will see it, that will be your answer. When the glory comes, when the shift comes, you will know it. And it's going to come not many days from now. Look for it. Look for it and it shall appear. Suddenly in your life. It shall appear because you have prayed. And God has heard your prayer. God has heard your prayer. And he has answered you. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for your son. I thank you for his obedience. Lord God, you will not cause his prayer to go unanswered. Amen. Father, those that doubted him and thought that he was lying or pretending, God, you are causing them to be put to shame. That indeed, they are the liars, but you are true to your son. Hallelujah. You are true to your son. Hallelujah. Oh, Shakata Rabba. Holy Spirit. Leka Barosieta. Ah, the glory of the Lord rests upon you. An increase. Father, I pray for capacity for an increase in his spirit. An enlargement of his spirit to hold your glory, to hold your anointing. To flow by the grace of God. I pray for increase. I command your spirit to open. Open and receive God. Receive an increase. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In your mind. Hallelujah. There will be an increase for revelation, for truth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Spirit of the Lord. Increase. Increase. Increase, 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 increase in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Spirit of God, hallelujah. Now I want everybody to lift up your hands, whether you're online or whether you're here. Thank you, Jesus. Focus on heaven. The intelligence of the Holy Spirit, right? while Reverend Yao was preaching and ministering, some of you here, you're going to get some download from heaven, from the Spirit of God. I see you, hallelujah. God is going to increase your ears to hear by the Spirit of God. You have some dreams and you have some things that you want to do for the Lord, but you don't, just don't know how to go about it. 
But as you engage the Holy Spirit, he is going to begin to tell you how to move, when to move. And I'm saying this to you, it is not going to be in 10 days. It's not going to be in three days, but it's beginning now. This moment, right now, right now. Receive it. Receive by the Spirit of God. His intelligence, his grace, his capacity to think in the name of Jesus, to think creatively in the name of Jesus. Father, touch your daughter. Hallelujah. Begin to yield your heart and your mind to the Spirit of God. Don't doubt what he says to you. It may, may seem different and impossible to your mind. Know that it is the Spirit of God that is going to begin to speak to you even as you stand here. Even as you stand here, receive it. Holy Spirit. Fear not. Be not afraid. For you have seen your hearts. He has given you a vision. He has given you a purpose. Run with it. Hear him. Hallelujah. Father, in G Holy Spirit, touch. Enlarge her in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. The Lord said, don't doubt. It's not about the feeling. It's about your faith. Okay? So receive the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Fa Is that okay? <laughs> Hallelujah. I know I was supposed to pray, but if it's okay, praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And let's lift up our hands. The word of the Lord said it's not by our might, nor is it by our power, but it's by the Spirit of God. Jesus said, as we gather in his name, he is here. And we have come tonight. Let your faith believe that Jesus is in this house. That the Spirit of God is here to meet you at the point of your need. Even you that are watching us. Your need is met tonight. Amen. Don't doubt the word of the Lord tonight. Believe the word of the Lord. Believe the scriptures and it shall manifest unto you. Amen. Believe the word and it shall come to pass in your life. That's the word of the Lord to you tonight. Believe his word and it shall come to pass in your life. I will say it again. Believe the word of the Lord and it shall come to pass in your life. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray for your children. Those that are watching online and those that are standing with us here tonight, I pray by your spirit, O oh God, you will reveal your truth unto them. Heaven will come in this place. Glory will manifest in their life. They will begin to become aligned with your spirit. Their mind will come into divine alignment in the name of Jesus. I command your mind, your thinking in the name of Jesus to come in alignment with the spirit of God. That your ears be open tonight to hear what the spirit is saying to you and begin to rise, begin to rise, begin to move by the spirit of God in the name of Jesus. Begin to maneuver. Begin to navigate. Begin to rise up by the Spirit in the name of Jesus that you will mount up. You shall fly. You shall increase. You shall overtake in the name of Jesus. You shall conquer in the name of Jesus. There's somebody in this place tonight, hallelujah. You are having an issue with your family or with someone. And it's so hard for you to forgive. If you're here, let's come and pray for you. You have a challenge that you're going through. Amen. There's a challenge that you're going through. And the Bible, the Lord is saying by the Spirit that to release that person. Forgive that person. Don't hold on to it anymore. That's your breakthrough. Amen. Don't hold on to unforgiveness, but release the forgiveness and you will see how things are going to shift in your life. 
You're going to see how things are going to move in your favor. In the name of Jesus. Let us just lift our hands and give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. I'll say this before I hand over the mic to Pastor Solomon. Whilst we're standing, this is what the Spirit of God said to me. Every one of you in this church, make sure that your relationship with this man of God is based on faith. Don't come to him with impossibilities. Pastor, I can't do it. How am I going to do it? Pastor, I don't think it's going to work. We should not. God has spoken to him. Work with him in faith. Don't bring roadblocks in his way. Because the faith that this man carries is a powerful faith. Don't make life hard for him. Work with him. When he said it's time for us to build, buy a new building, don't say, Pastor, oh my God, the banks, you know, it's all. Say amen. And let's pray. Amen. Don't bring doubt into this ministry and frustrate his, the work that God has sent him to do. Without faith, you cannot please God. Don't frustrate him. Work with him in faith and you will see what God is going to do. Father, we thank you for everyone that have opened their ears to hear this message. That the word be written on the table of their heart and mind that this year, 2021, is a year of possibilities because the tomb is empty and Jesus has risen. We thank you for this opportunity in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, we can do better than this. Come on, come on, come on, we church. Come on. Oh, I can't hear you. Come on, come on. Please stretch your hands quickly. Stretch your hands and let's bless. Let's bless the man of God and the woman of God. Come on, come on. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Begin to speak. Tonight is the beginning. Today is day one. Imagine what you are receiving. Then tomorrow will be double. Saturday will be fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lift your voice. Come on, let's bless. Speak into their lives. Come on, pray. 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 That God will use him to minister. God will use him to transform. God will use him to change and to shift destiny. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. Pray, 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 pray. Shut up. Come on, watching online, lift your voice. Pray for every young. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. Pray. Pray for the woman of God too. Pray. Double blessing. Double power. Double favor. Double grace. Matoli Akatapayaba. In Jesus' mighty name. Lift your offering. We're going to take our offering. We're going to take it from. Yes, yes, yes. No more doubts. The empty. The tomb is empty. The tomb is empty. No more doubts. Lift your offering. Everybody pick your offering. Watching online in house. Pick your offering. No more doubt. Cabra dosha. Mantolia katapa. Oh, yes. No, no, no. Ayadadadadabosha. Lebrado. We believe, we believe, we believe. Come on, come on, come on. The man of God said, two people went into the tomb, but they all saw differently. Ah, Kayado Shatapa, Makali Abosha. We all heard the message, but our revelations are different. Ha. Father, I speak over this offering and I declare tonight is the beginning. Of empty two. Father, bless each and every hand that is lifted. 
Honor each and every hand that Family, is lifted. Family, thank you so much for joining us for the beginning of our MT2 conference. What a powerful message that was. And honestly, as the man of God said, that we need to have faith because the tomb is empty and God is about to do something miraculous in your life. So take a seed, a powerful seed, and sow it, believing that whatever it is that you ask God for, that he will surely do for you. Do not doubt. Do not doubt because the tomb is empty this is the first night and there's more to come so please so and i promise you your life will never be the same you will receive it you will receive it you will receive it you will receive it in jesus mighty name come and drop your offering yes sir no more doubt uh-huh Come on, lift your voice. Let's sing it. Somebody just lift your hands and I just want you to confess it. Speak it into existence. Speak it. Speak it out. Speak it. Just say no more doubts. 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 Seeing what is happening. No more doubt. Seeing that the white linen is folded in the right way. No more doubt. 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 Abrado Shatapa Le Cabrado Zivatapa Cabrado Shat Jesus 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 Reverend thank you for coming When I'm of God thank you for ministering to us Come on let's celebrate them one more time let's Celebrate them Celebrate them Tomorrow listen the doors are open you can come in Oh yes Tomorrow we are here again Day two. <laughs> Tomorrow come. We are bringing the service to an end. But as you know, we cannot end it without asking the Holy Spirit to go with us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Kado Shada Bradaba. tonight we thank you Jehovah God for this wonderful time 
at your feet mighty God we are living not living in your presence we need your Holy Spirit to go with us Holy Spirit go with us Go with us, 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 go with us. We will be here tomorrow again to drink from that well, God. Come on, Shadi Abba. And then we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We bless you. And we honor you. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on, somebody shout a big amen. Shout a tenderous amen. Oh, come on, you can do better than this. If you know the service was a blessing unto you, I said clap those hands uh, and shout. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. Tomorrow we will be here again, 8 o'clock. Do not miss it. Tomorrow invite somebody. Come. Invite a brother or sister, an uncle, whoever that is doubting. Invite them, tell them to come. That the tomb is empty. For that reason, whatever you are looking for has been released into your hands. You don't need to doubt. Hey, the yes, battle please. has been won yes, for your sake. God bless you. Hallelujah. Let's share the grace. Let's share the grace. Let's share the grace. May the grace.